Hey team, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be taking a look at a post from r slash engineering students titled, Is Engineering What You Originally Thought It Was Gonna Be About? Also, this is getting better every week, but still over 84% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. It doesn't really do anything for you, but it helps me out a lot. So. Thanks if you do that. As I am nearing the end of my mechanical engineering degree, I have to admit, it's not exactly what I thought it was going to be about. I knew it would involve heavy exposure to calculus and physics, but when I first started, I thought the entirety of it was the design and the study of machine elements, bearings, shafts, gear trains, belt drives, linkages, etc. But it turns out that's only the very end of it. I didn't even realize heat transfer, dynamic systems, and basic circuit analysis were all part of mechanical engineering. I can now see why ME is considered the broadest and most versatile. What did you think your engineering degree was going to be about? Did it match your expectations? I think any pursuit you have in life that lasts four to five years is probably going to end up being very different than what you thought it was going to be at the beginning. Because while on the surface it probably looks the same, right? Everyone that goes through it can still say the same thing at the end that successfully makes it through. And that is, I have an engineering degree. But everyone's path looks very different. And so that's why I think it's very hard to predict what it's gonna be like. I mean, so much time goes by. It's just natural that things are gonna end up not as you thought they would. Like every day of your life, you wake up and there is the potential that something unexpected could happen. Stack a bunch of unexpected days over four to five years and then yeah, something you're pursuing that's super hard and things are gonna get really wonky along the way. But what was my experience, right? I got an electrical engineering degree from UC Davis and it took me four years and two quarters. And I always call that last year my 50 cent year <laughs> because it, it took two quarters and I've still never received a laugh on that joke, so. But even the first thing I'm about to tell you shows you how unexpected that journey was for me. First of all, I started as a computer engineering major I then switched after two years to electrical engineering. The reason I did that is because I didn't realize how much programming was going to be in computer engineering. I knew there would be some of it, but I think it was like something like six to seven CS courses that I had to take. And by the third one, I was like, yeah, I think I'm good. That's probably enough of that. And by the time I decided to switch, I had a few engineering internships under my belt and I realized, oh, the jobs I'm going after really only require computer engineering or electrical engineering. So because I'm not too keen on CS, let me take the easier route, which is electrical engineering. I know some people say, oh, electrical, that's harder than computer. But for me and my skill set, EE was the easier option for me. And then, yeah, it took me over four years. And that can be attributed to a lot of things. It's probably because of the major change. There were courses I had to catch up on. It could also be attributed to the fact that we had a pandemic middle way through my junior year. You know, going along with the theme of mechanical engineering, I guess you could say that really threw a wrench in things. <coughs> Is it because I'm saying them or they're just not funny jokes? And then yeah, coming back for those last two quarters, it was weird because I met all the other engineers that were also taking five years and we all did our senior project together. And we were talking to each other about how weird that feeling was to like go to school be home for like a whole year and then to come back. We compared it to essentially getting like Thanos snapped because we all just disappeared. And then we all just came back and acted like everything was normal. And yeah, there were a lot of like little things that didn't go as planned. I failed a couple math courses along the way. Math was and is my strongest subject. So I would have never predicted that I would have struggled so much and failed two calculus courses, but I did. And then I ended up retaking them and I passed them. Oh, nice car. Have you got A's? Well, no, I didn't. I didn't say that. I said I passed them. Okay. I got to this point. I have the degree. That's all that matters now. Right. But again, that's just my experience. I am one of millions of engineers in the world. So my experience is unique, right? To me, but there are so many other stories out there. So let's take a look at the comments. See what some of those stories are. I am barely starting my junior year in ME2. And after doing a lot of research, I realized it is what I thought it would be, but not the way I thought it would become that. Let me explain. I knew ME would be based on the studies of the thing that would eventually lead to create all things like bearings, system gears, etc. But I thought the path one had to take to get there was more on the creative development side rather than the theoretical and complex analysis it is. For example, I thought creating a structure for holding something was more on the imagining a solid structure that won't fall and meet expectations side rather than analyzing everything around it and in it and then coming with the most efficient and clear almost lazy solution 
as possible. After all, I like more the reality of what it is rather than what I thought it would be. As a video I saw a couple weeks ago, engineering doesn't teach you to be a physicist or mathematician, but rather to solve problems around you in the most efficient and clearer way possible. This is a really good point actually, and I should touch on that. Going into college, yeah, I thought it'd be very hands-on. I thought it'd be a lot of stuff that you do in a lab, but so much of it is theoretical. And again, I don't know if that's a product of me having basically two entire years of my college be remote, but yeah, a lot of it just had to do with theory, right? Look at this circuit on a piece of paper and calculate things like current, voltage, all that. Very rarely did I actually touch an actual circuit board. Yeah, really, the only hands-on stuff started my senior year, that fifth year that I did. That's when we had our senior projects, that's when we actually went into the lab. There's a dedicated, as I'm sure every college has, building for engineering called Kemper Hall at UC Davis. And I spent basically no time in that building. Before the pandemic, I took a class called, I think, EEC 18. It was a circuits class. And then after the pandemic, when I came back, I took my senior design project class in that building. I took what, like 140 to 160 credits or whatever in college, and only two of my courses were in the engineering building. That's the building I toured as a high schooler where they showed us all the cool stuff, right? They showed us you could draw a little design on a quarter using this cool laser they have. But then when I was a student at college, I basically didn't even set foot in that building. Again, I missed like the third and fourth year of college to the pandemic, like being on campus so maybe that's why there was no time in that building but yeah coming in you would think oh i'm gonna be an engineer i'm gonna do engineering things but yeah that first two years really is just spent doing like prereq courses before you take upper div courses so yeah it's very heavy into like math physics all those things you don't really see engineering stuff until yeah you're like more than halfway into the thing but i agree with what this commenter says i think engineering school doesn't teach you how to be an engineer because it's such a like specialized thing once you get into the real world. It just gives you like the basic and general tools to be a really good problem solver. And then the understanding is whoever hires one of these very skilled problem solvers can transfer those skills into something more specialized once they hit the real world. It's really after college, after you have your engineering degree, that you become a real engineer. Having an engineering degree is really, when you think about it, just a prerequisite to become an engineer. I've actually run into people that are like, you're not an engineer if you just have an engineering degree. You have to show that you actually know what to do. And I don't believe that. I think that's kind of stupid. It's just a little like <laughs> gatekeepy for no reason. But like on a real level, yeah, the real engineering stuff is only after you have the degree. I'm okay, you can call yourself an engineer if you have a degree, totally. Yeah, oh, you got the ring and everything, right? But only once you're probably like a decade into working full-time can you be like oh i'm like an engineer that knows what he's doing 10 years is a little long let's say like three to five years that's a good amount of time my undergrad degree left me feeling like i didn't know anything so i got two more after that and working a decade i still feel that way outside one highly specific niche <laughs> see everyone experiences imposter syndrome but this person decided, how do i combat that i'll just get two more degrees <laughs> i would probably bargain to say that made it worse. They probably got those degrees and were like, damn, and I still don't have any real world experience. I don't know what I'm doing if you really think about it. And it's funny, they say after working a decade, I just used that number, but they still say, I feel like outside of the niche that I've been specialized in, I probably don't know what I'm doing. And that's a very real feeling. I feel like as a full-time engineer, you get very specialized at doing one thing for the company you work for. And even if you really know what you're doing at your job, with such a volatile job market nowadays, you get nervous thinking like, oh, what if I lose my job? Is this very specialized focus gonna be transferable to another job I'm trying to find? Or will that other job just look at me and be like, okay, yeah, you know how to do that one thing but do you know anything else? That's why it's very important, even if you're working full-time as an engineer, to always be building your skill set outside of your job even. Absolutely no. Entered in mechatronics expecting to build a robot, only to have one robotics subject at the last period, and not being about robots. But I'm really enjoying the journey. There are a lot of things I've learned that can be useful at work or on personal projects. <laughs> yeah, any like hands-on stuff that you think you're gonna do, it really comes at that last year of school. And it will probably be like a watered down version of what you think it will be. 
because where do we get our ideas, right? There's not a lot of like, <laughs> this sounds stupid, but not a lot of like engineering representation. <laughs> the only stuff you see from engineers are in like very distilled gray corporate videos that are put out by like big companies. So we get a lot of our like engineering ideas from movies, right? Like pop culture. That's why people turn to like a Tony Stark and they're like, yeah, that's an engineer. <laughs> but then we go to the real world and we're like, all right, show me the robots. And it's this little thing that turns on a light when a, it senses that there's motion and then it'll like spray water at certain times of the day and then boom you have like a, a dual purpose watering uh, light <laughs> that you can put in your garden and then just to feel connected to Tony Stark you name it Jarvis and you're like yeah I invented that <laughs> I thought chemical engineering would be about making new chemicals or something I actually hated both physics and math. Most of the physics has grown on me, but I still don't like the math, which is quite unfortunate. Yeah, what even is chemical engineering, right? I What do they do? Do you guys make makeup or what is that? It's either like makeup or nukes, right? What do chemical engineers do? And they talk about how physics has grown on them, but math, they still don't like. I'm like opposite. I like math. I don't really mess with physics. You can miss me with that, okay? Assume we are in a frictionless vacuum and uh, miss me with physics. Yep. It's a highly paid job and it pays my bills and travel expenses. Am I happy? Absolutely. Remember, at the end of the day, it's a job. I do understand this point of view. I feel like a lot of the appeal of engineering to me was the lifestyle, being able to work this job and then like be paid enough to do the things I wanna do outside of it. But yeah, I'm only three years into working full time, but I've already been able to see how important it is to actually care a little bit about what you're doing. If you get absolutely no fulfillment from your full-time job, the thing you probably do at least 40 hours a week, it does kind of hurt the rest of your life because you spend such a significant part of your adult life doing something that you don't even really care about. You know, they say that thing, it doesn't really fill your cup. And yes, even though it's like paying you a lot and you can do other stuff, there's still this idea of like, it's kind of like opportunity cost, right? Where you're like, damn, I'm spending all this time doing this thing that I don't really care about. So like, what's the point in putting so much time into it? I know it's giving me these other things, but like, I truly don't care about this thing. So should I keep doing it? And then over time, right? That kind of weighs on you. Cause you're like, should I go somewhere else? So yes, at the end of the day, it is a job. Totally reap the rewards. But I've learned, yes, if you work more full time, you really gotta give yourself a lot of reasons to show up every day or else one day you're not gonna wanna show up. And then that's like a whole thing you probably gotta deal with. But this comment does highlight the importance of expectations. They went in with the expectation that I'm gonna get a job that pays me well. And guess what? I got a job and it pays me well. So am I happy? Of course, I just got a fucking bullseye. I got exactly what I was shooting for. And so that's something to remember on your engineering journey. What is it that you truly want? Make sure you understand that and then try to shoot directly at that. And on that journey, try to learn as much as possible. So if you do need to kind of stray off course a little bit, at least you have the tools to do it. And remember, at the end of the day, you did somehow make it to this point in the video. So you might as well subscribe if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram, like the video, and I will see you in the next one.